Welcome to the painting desk. Today we're going to be painting up some Slaves to Darkness, the servants of chaos in Warhammer Age of Sigmar. In particular, we've got a Chaos Chosen model here. And I think in keeping with my theme of painting stuff from one game in the style of another game, We'll be painting this, this guy up in the style of you know, something like a Dark Souls inspired. I think some of the knights and other enemies from that game have an aesthetic that's going to work really well with this. So let's take a look. Now to start things off, we've got our miniature that has been already zenithal primed using a matte black and a white ink. If you want to know how to do that, you can check out the video up in the corner there. But other than that, we're going to go from there and use a combination of Rune Lord Brass and we're going to thin it about one to one with some contrast or glaze medium. Now this is actually going to let us take advantage of a little bit of the properties of contrast, particularly in how it flows over surfaces or covers a little bit transparently. And what we're gonna do is we just get this all over all of the armor, including the trim. We're gonna leave this chain mail and we can just start and pick a nice big panel. Unlike most of the actual contrast line, these metallics aren't really... They're very uniformly pigmented. So we're not going so much after the shading as we are the flow around in kind of the, the uniform coloration on all these surfaces. And there we go, all of that armor is colored in. See how with our zenithal, some of that contrast medium paint has given us a couple of different tones. Now we're going to move on to doing all of all of this chain mail and you know on the underside or like the undersuit here and the joints. We're gonna use some Vallejo Metal Color Burnt Iron. This is gonna flow really nicely without the need really of any additional thinner or any medium. Additionally, it's a little bit of a brown hued metallic. So it's gonna fit right in with all of that kind of brassy armor that we were working on. Now 
Now with all the chain mail picked out and I've gone ahead and picked out anything else that's I want to be that silver metallic, whether it's these pieces on the weapon here, the main blade of the weapon, or any of these little chains, and even this uh, sidearm mace thing here. And next, we're going to be doing the horns, as well as any, let's call them sturdier organic bits, whether they're bone or some sort of like demonic chitin or something. We're going to do those, predictably enough, with some skeleton hoard. This does really well at giving that sort of uh, bone color. And to do that, we've just got to run it right over those surfaces. It'll even take care of some of those recesses that we had made earlier. Let's try not to let it pool too hard. It'll cover pretty well with just the one coat. Now we got that bone and chitin all picked out. And so we're going to move on to all the organic bits like this hand here. He's got kind of a skinned demon skull thing on his on his belt. And for that, just want to use little bit of Black Templar. This has a little bit of blue in it, which I find gives a, a much better sort of organic look to it. Done. Now it's time to move on to all of this cloth here, as well as the leather on the handle and these bags and basically anything else that we want to be a, a softer material. And within the game we're using as inspiration, Dark Souls, there's not a lot of very vibrant colors. So I want this to be red, but I don't want it to be super poppy. I, I want it to be a little bit desaturated. And for that, we're going with Flesh Terror's red over, let's say, the usual Blood Angel's red. Let's see if I got some of that here. You can see that's much more orange and like a traditional red color. Instead, this stuff is a lot more dark, more the color of blood. And it's going to, as we go through subsequent steps, it's actually going to darken down even more and just be a subtle accent. And 
And there we go. All of that red is picked out. And you can see now that it's dried, it has mellowed out quite considerably. It doesn't stand out too horribly much. From here, we're going to go back to a classic. Good old known oil or any sort of black wash or shade paint. And what we're going to do is actually just work this all over the armor and chain mail. This is, and you know, let's work it over everything. The first of a few unifying washes here. Especially on these armor plates, we can actually let the wash be a little bit heavier than we normally would. Kind of ignore our usual go to about letting it pool anywhere, but only on the armor. And there we go. The wash has dried and you can see it really knocked down that brass and then kind of gave it a little bit of a matte finish. And we actually wanted it, like I was mentioning, to pull in those areas, kind of towards the bottoms of each plate. We didn't want to really paint this armor black but then again the uh, black knights that we are modeling this after aren't actually that black themselves what we're going to do next is take some enamel dark brown wash this is uh, from AK, though you can use the ones from uh, Ammo by MIG, pretty fine. And we're just gonna get this all over. Add a little bit more of that, that grime. Now we've got that wash on there. All that's left to do is to let it dry. It's gonna take anywhere from about 45 minutes to an hour and a half, somewhere in there. And there is the enamel wash, at least mostly dried. Enough for us to be able to go on to the next step where we're going to take a little makeup sponge or a Q-tip. And then I've got some white spirits here. You can also use uh, odorless spirits or mineral spirits. And then what we want to do, we'll start on this ax head here. Just draw it along. It'll take off most of that wash that we did earlier. But leave it in some of the recesses. It will also tint the final finish a little bit, which works out really well 
or the sort of grimy and dirty look that we're going for. And you just keep going. You can leave some of it in spots. Like I'll, I'll leave some right there in order to add a little bit of character to the surfaces. You don't need a lot of pressure. And then once we are done with that, you just need to give it a few minutes to dry. About the same as it took for the wash itself to dry. Especially you want to run a sponge over these edges. You leave a lot more on the surfaces. And on the whole model, we'll just go over it. as much as we want until we've got the look we're looking for. And we'll come back when that's done. Now that enamel is all dried and cured, it's a little shiny in spots, but that shouldn't hurt us. And so now what we're going to do is actually work on bringing back some of this metallic that we've got. Firstly, we want to go back to that burnt iron we were using earlier. And that's what we're going to use to bring back some of the metallic look on the ax. If I just Taking a soft bristle brush and getting eh, most of the paint off. And then just going to start at this axe edge and actually work our way across. A couple of reasons we're doing this. In addition to catching the edges, it actually creates some really cool little streaks and stuff you can see there. Kind of makes the axe look like it's seen some wear. And we can, of course, do the same thing on this backward facing edge. And we'll just go around and pick up some of these other details. We're also going to use the same burnt iron to kind of run back over the chain mail. Now let's not go too close to some of the other surfaces. We don't even have to pick up all of the links, just a couple here and there. And it's fine if we don't get all of them. Makes the uh, rings seem like they've got a little bit of extra wear on them, maybe some rust or dirt. And only certain ones of them stand out. Now that we've got that axe and chain mail handled, the next thing is to do a much more heavy dry brush over the rest of the armor. For that, we're going to use pale burnt metal. The two metals will kind of tie in together with each other. This one, we want to really focus on those edges. But if it doesn't pick them up perfectly, that's fine. But we're actually using this smaller brush here. That way we can make sure that we just get the armor. 
and not a whole lot else. And we're just gonna do this all over, trying to pick up as many of those edges as we can, as much of that trim as we can. With the dry brushing all taken care of, you can see we've got those nice edges picked out, giving it more of a metallic or like a, like a burnt look. And then there's just one more step to go, and that is to start adding a little bit of glow to this guy. Like We're gonna add some, I think, to his eyes and to these little runes right here on the axe. To do that, we're gonna use some white ink. Uh, pretty much any thin down white acrylic will work. This just happens to be mostly what I've got on hand right now. But the advantage of using ink is that it flows very, very well. And we want it to go right into these recesses here where the eyes are. I'm just gonna come at them from the side. Make sure we've got a decent point on our brush. Just fill in those eye sockets there. It's okay if we go a little bit over. And I think we want to do this little slit down the front too. Then for the runes, it's the, kind of the same drill. White laid down. Going to add in some magenta fluorescent. Now this stuff is pretty thin, so you don't really need to thin it out all that much. And then we just go right back over those areas. We don't really have to be all that neat either. Some of the overspill is just going to make it look more glowy. And same thing on these runes. And then once that fluorescent is dry, we just want to go back to the most bright portions of the glows and redo them in white. Now for this, you do have to be a little bit more precise, especially when you're going to eyes. But again, if you overspill a little, it's not that important. Just as close to the center as you can kind of dab a bit of white. go. Then for the runes, just a touch or two of white close to the center of each one should do the trick. And lastly, to finish off those glows, we've got some Doomfire Magenta. And for this, we don't need a whole lot. It's a contrast paint. I'm just gonna settle in, color those re 
recesses very nicely. And if it does like that and we still want some of the glow to show through, dab away a little bit of it. have it. From here all that's left to do is to finish up the base and we're gonna give it a coat of matte varnish to even knock a little bit more off this shine and to help seal it in for gameplay. And if you enjoyed this video feel free to leave a like down there to let me know. If you've got any questions just leave them in the comments or if you just want to chat about what you think of the new Slaves to Darkness line. I, I kind of like this new Chosen model. Just spiky enough. And if you'd like to see more, like how to do this style of bass, you can either watch the video that I posted last week where I show you how to make some of these out of plastic card and you can subscribe so that you don't miss any future videos. Make sure to hit that little bell icon too so that it notifies you when I post something. But most of all, and as always, thank you for watching and happy painting.